Okay, I wanted to make a video here to talk about how to use Excel to work with environmental models. So I find uh, that a lot of students don't have a, a much experience with Excel. And so I wanted to make a few videos to just give you some tips on how to get started. Uh, and so for this example, I want to look at a, a, high, a kind of simple high, hypothetical model where we're looking at the concentration in a river that has plug flow in it. Um, so those details aren't super important for the video, but but um, if I was going to make a spreadsheet, generally uh, a few good practices are going to be you want to provide information so that a person that looks at it can open it up and understand what it does, what the inputs and outputs are. And so I'm going to start by calling this pollutant concentration in a river. Okay, so this will be my spreadsheet, and then I might call it... Uh, Right below that, I, I might want to put my name, and so Dave, and then, you know, Dave at my email, or whatever your email is, dot com, so that if somebody opens it up, they know who to contact. And then the next thing I'd normally do is start putting in some, some cells that I would, that would have information about the model. So uh, I'm going to start by just inputting the formula so that a person that opens it up can kind of understand what that is. And so I'm going to use Microsoft's equation editor for that. So what I'm going to do is go up here to the insert button at the top, and then I'm going to hit equation. And that's going to create an equation uh, cell in there that I can work with. You notice that when I do that, it creates this design ribbon here that has the settings. And I can, if I start typing there, like C equals, I can go to another tab and then I can always go back to this design tab to find the settings for formulas. And so this one, uh, the, the model we're going to be working with for plug flow, the solution is C equals C0. So C0, if you want to put in a subscript or if you have subscript and superscript, you can do that in here using this script thing. It has different options for subscript and superscript. And so this one we're going to be basically saying the concentration at point X is equal to some initial concentration times, and then I'm going to have another, uh, I'm going to have a superscript here, and it's going to be E to the power. And then up here in the exponent, I'm going to make a fraction. So it's going to be E to the negative, and then it's going to be UX Let's see, or actually it's going to be KX over U. Okay. Yeah, so this is going to give me the concentration. So C0 is my initial concentration. K is my decay rate. X is the location. And then U is the velocity. So this is the model that we're looking at. Uh, I might also want to make an equation here that shows where this came from. So the governing differential equation here would be like, you could make that too. Get rid of this other. And see, it has things like derivative here, dc by dx equals minus a kc. And then for plug flow, that's going to be over over you. Okay, and so you can separate that and integrate it and uh, solve it from there. So um, yeah, I guess we'd also need an initial condition there, and so that would be C at C at x equals 0 equals C0. That's our initial value. Okay, so you know if you have a model generally you're going to have some governing equation that you're trying to solve. The governing equation here is a first order equation, so you need a condition on x at, at 0, and so then you can separate this and uh, integrate it. And I think that's right. Okay, so that's our model, that's our initial condition, and this is our solution. So now in the spreadsheet, that what this is saying is I have several so in a general model, it's going to have independent variables, dependent variables, and parameters. And so independent variables represent the domain. Here the domain is, is going to be like a river. 
So we're looking at the concentration at different points in a river. So x is our independent variable. That's the location in the river. And then c is the dependent variable that's gonna, that we're trying to find at those different points in the river. And then we have three parameters, c0, k, and u, that represent specific details about the river, how fast the pollutant decays, what the velocity is, and what the initial concentration is. So in general, in a spreadsheet, you're going to want to put your parameters up at the at the top if you have a you know physical type model like this. So I'm going to make one for C0. And so I'm going to just create like basically a parameter value here. I can make a subscript out of that hitting this button. Subscript, OK, C0. And then the units on that might be like milligrams per liter. And let's say that it's 100. So that's my initial value of C0. Then I need a value for k, and then I need a value for u. And let's say that we have this in uh, hours to the negative 1. That might be units for the decay rate. It needs to have 1 over time units, so we'll make that a superscript. And then u is going to be in, let's say, like uh, meters per hour. And so that might be, I don't know, 100 meters per hour if it's moving along. So these are our parameters here and you know we might even want to write out what they are so this is the initial concentration this is the first order decay rate and then this is the velocity okay so these are the parameters that are specific to, to a given river and then within that river we're going to have concentrations at different points and we're going to have uh, different values for the for x and so we have x and c um, all right, so x equals 0 and maybe 1, 2. So we could put a couple in there to start. And then so, so our, for our uh, independent variable, we're just going to put in whatever values we want to use to calculate. I'm starting with 0, 1, and 2 because, you know, it's a pretty good starting point. But I may want to change what the interval it is, for example, in this. But um, now I need to put in my... Um, equation and so our formula here c0 e to the minus kx over u so here i need to so i'm hitting equals and now i'm going to go up to this cell so what, what i want basically is to be able to copy this formula down and it uses the value of x on the left and then the parameter values up above each time so that means i need to hold constant the the value of c0 so i can do that by hitting the f4 button right now if you're on a windows computer okay so uh, you'll see that it puts a dollar sign there. You could also just type in those dollar signs if you wanted, but the F4 is a nice trick. So C0 and then times, and then EXP is for like E to the power of in Excel, and then I'm going to put a negative, and then a K, uh, which also I'm going to hold constant, times, and then X. So this one I want to change. When I copy this down, I want it to always go to the one to the left, and so if there's no dollar signs, it'll have the same relative reference for when you copy a formula. So that one I don't want to hit F4. Uh, divided by U and F4. And that should be everything. OK. And so K, I need to put something in. So let's make that a 1. It doesn't affect this first value. And so let's see how much it drops. And let's see if I've got the formula right. So that's one thing maybe you, you weren't familiar with. I'll do that again. You can click in this bottom right corner and drag to get the formula to go down. You can also just like double click. If you go right here and you see the little cross, double click, boom, it goes down. OK, so you see it wasn't dropping very much. So 0, 1, 2, that might be OK. Another another trick you can do is if you grab it, Excel will try to figure out what the pattern is. So if I start dragging this down, it, it will automatically do this. You could also write a formula to make it equals the one above it plus one. There's different ways you could do it. So here I'm going to go ahead and let's go down to like 10. And if I copy it, you see we still haven't dropped off very much. So I might decide that for these values of the parameters, I want maybe a little bit bigger step. So maybe I do like every five. So this is x in, in meters. So the units would have to be meters here to make this all work out. And then this is c in milligrams per liter. Uh, OK, so I'll hit those two and then double click and you see it'll automatically update those. And now we're getting a formula that drops off more quickly. So that's pretty good. And so I'm going to go ahead and just keep doing that down to, let's say, 100. OK, so that gives me enough points here now. 
uh, for X and C that I can make a plot and then I can visualize what the concentration looks like in the river. So to make a plot, I can, another trick that you might want to know, I'm going to hit the, uh, if you hit the shift button, so you could grab it with your mouse. When it's a really big selection, it's easy to mess that up. So a little trick is to hit the shift button and that will allow you to add to the number of cells. Okay. Another trick is to hit the control button and that will jump kind of to the, to the end. So if I hit control to the right, it'll just go one to the right. If I hit control and down now, so if, if I hit one with just the down button by itself, it just goes down one. But if I hit control and down, it's going to jump all the way to the bottom to where there's a, a gap. So I'm going to hit control and go back up. Okay. Back up to the top here. And so if I want to grab all these, I'm going to hit over one with shift and now I'm going to hit control and then it will grab them all. Okay, so that's a trick to make a graph more quickly. And I'm going to hit insert here and then I'm going to make a scatter plot out of this. There are lots of other kinds of plots you can make, but I feel like we're often making scatter plots. So here is a, a scatter plot. You can then change it. You can see the pollutant concentration dropping. Uh, we can change the series type. Let's see here scatter we might want to make it this will make smooth lines and this will make lines with sharp edges if you have a lot of points this is probably the the best way to do it and then it'll still look smooth okay so then i can do that and now i've got a graph so now i've got a model here it's got a just if somebody opens this that isn't familiar they know kind of what it's about pollutant concentration in a river they've got some f formulas here. This tells them the governing equation that's used to solve it and the initial condition. And then this is the, the solution to that equation. And then so it has these three parameters. So if I wanted to see like what's going to happen to say, I'm worried about the concentration here at X equals 60, I can, and I don't know the exact value of the decay rate. So what happens if I change this to two, I can go in and immediately get some feedback on what that is. Okay. So if I change it to two, for example, uh, or if I say, oh, it's actually a lot smaller, 0.1. Now you see that the graph kind of moved on its own, so I might want to override the uh, values for the X and Y here. That's probably something I'd want to do in this case. So here I, I just double clicked on the axis and it brings up axis options and you can see here the min and max. So I don't want it to be auto. Right now it's on auto. I'm going to change that to zero and you see it says now that it's basically going to always go from 0 to 100 uh, and I might let's say go from 0 to 110 because I know that basically for this particular set of parameter values that it's going to be between 0 and 110. Uh, likewise here on the x-axis I might want to set this it's it's set okay right now but I'm going to just kind of override it to make sure that it yeah is set to 0 and 110 if I change numbers so that way that this thing doesn't jump around like crazy and you know what maybe I'll, I'll make it 120 uh, for the y value. All right, so now I've got a graph. Uh, let's say that I want to add a, a y label. This this graph needs a label, so I can go up here under this design tab. When I'm if I click off this, you see I'm that design goes away. If I click back on it, this design ribbon um, appears, and I can go to add chart element and axis titles, primary horizontal primary vertical, and now I can go in and I can add in a value. So this is supposed to represent the concentration, concentration in milligrams per liter. And this is supposed to represent the distance from pollutant source. And that's in meters in this situation. Okay, uh, the default colors, at least for my version of Excel, if you want to play around with the appearance of the graph, looking at this I don't really like the way this goes away so maybe I want to set this to 120 after all all right um, default colors here I can change so if I go up to home here is the the text color right now it's kind of a gray actually if you didn't realize that so if I hit that you can see how it makes it black and to me that looks better you can change the outside of this area the border here to make it a solid line right now it's blue I don't want it to be blue let's make it black that's the border on the outside and then as these grid lines uh, I don't like the way they look so I'll just hit delete and those will go away so now yeah I've got a model here that I can work with these are the equations this is who to contact this is kind of what it does these are the values that I can change around now and it shouldn't 
jump. It'll it'll show me what the result is. What if the velocity is actually 200? Okay. And this is the concentrations in these first 100 meters. Uh, so this is kind of how you could set up a model to work with in Excel. And I, I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into getting started with uh, Excel.